Let us now proceed and check out the loop control statements in case of Kotlin. So in Kotlin, we have the break statements, continue statements and also the return statements. Now in this video, we will check out the break statements. So here inside the IntelliJ IDE, I have simply written a for loop such as print the values from 1 to 10. So let us now execute our code. So in the output console, we have the output from 1 to 10. Now suppose I want to print the value till let's say 5. I don't want to print the values after 5 that is 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So for that I will simply write a condition. Let's say if after printing 5, let us write a condition if let's say i is equal to equal to 5 then I will simply break out of the loop, right? So I will simply use the break keyword here and now let us run our code and let's see the output. So in the output we have 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5. So with the help of break statement when i becomes 5 we simply exit out of this loop. That is we no longer print the values after the i becomes 5. So this is the main purpose of using the break statement in Kotlin. Now suppose if I remove the if condition from here and suppose if I have the multiple loop that is for loop within which I have one more for loop. So let's use j in let's say 1 dot dot 10. Now inside this suppose I print the values. Let's print the value using the interpolation dollar i then space then dollar j. And now let us run the code and let's see the output. So here we are getting too much of output in the output console. So let us do one thing. Let us reduce the range. Let's say 1, 2, 3 and then again 1, 2, 3 and then run the code. So in the output I have 1, 1, 1, 2, 1, 3, 2, 1 and so on till 3, 3. So all the combinations we are having in the output console that we can have with the numbers of 1, 2 and 3. And now suppose if I want to break after this 2, 2 that is I don't want to print 2, 3, 3, 1, 3, 2 and 3, 3. So I want to print the output till 2, 2. So what I will do is soon after this print ln statement I will simply use if let's say i equal to equal to 2 and j equal to equal to 2 then I will simply try to break out of the loop. So let us use the break condition and then let us now run the code. Now here if you notice what is happening here we are getting 1 1 1 2 1 3 2 1 2 2 and after 2 2 we are again getting printed 3 1 3 2 and 3 3. Now the break statement by default simply breaks out of the nearest loop. Now the nearest parent loop within which this break is present is actually this for loop, right? That is the inner for loop. Now the outer for loop remains unaffected with this break. So in that case, here we have one more concept of let's say labeled for loop. So here I will simply use my loop at the rate space. Now we have simply assigned a name for the outer for loop. That is this loop is now known as my loop. Now. I have to tell the break statement that you have to break out of this outer for loop, not the inner for loop. So for that I will simply use break at the rate my loop. So this break statement will now break out of this outer for loop and both the loops in return will be terminated automatically. So let us now run the code. So here we go in the output we have just 2 2 at the end. So after the condition is met after 2 2 we don't have any output in the output console. So in this video you have just now learned a new concept of the labeled for loop, right? How we can use the label and take its advantage. So this is all about this video about the break statement in Kotlin.